This is a HeadGum Podcast. about love and relationships and tinder and trying to figure out how i'm still single even though i'll eat your butt my guest today is such a fun person i love her so much she wrote on workaholics she's currently writing on la to vegas and she's on my show called loosely exactly nicole what a dream jen d'angelo woohoo <laughs> <laughs> I never know how to jump in. <laughs> well, I truly loved it because it was so different than what I had been doing. I was just screaming and ha 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 and tee hee hee and you just went, oh, woo. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. Jen, you're a married lady. I'm a married lady. You've been married for a year now? No. Um, I've been married for, oh boy, math, nine months. <laughs> Uh, Lucas is going to listen to this, and he's going to be so upset that you had to take Deeply a great big offended. Pause. Deeply. So um, nine months. Yeah. That's fun. It's pretty fun. Yeah, we've been together for nine years. Dang. Yeah, which is insane. You've been married for, for every month of the year you've been together? Yeah. <laughs> that's never going to happen again. You should celebrate. Oh, my God, we should, actually. <laughs> that's great. Uh, oh, I guess you could celebrate every year. Until you hit 12 months. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do, yeah, we could do a 10. Because next year it'll be 10 months for 10 years. Or no, because then I'll have been married for a year and 10 months. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm very dumb. <laughs> this is the only time you can do it. <laughs> it's a huge deal. <laughs> it is. It's a great big deal. Yeah. You met him in college? Yes. Yeah. So you've completely missed online dating. Yeah, completely. It's uh, insane. You're so lucky. It's so I it's nuts. I feel like I <laughs> it makes me feel a hundred years older <laughs> than everybody I know. Because <laughs> it's a gigantic thing, like part of people's social lives that I just have no idea about. Yeah. We're like, you have to <laughs> I'll just like be in the corner <laughs> swiping on people and then being like, I guess I have a date tonight. <laughs> It's very awful. Here's a question. In the writer's room, has anyone ever pitched a, like a Tindery thing? And you're like, I don't know. And like stayed quiet. She's like, I truly don't know how that works. Um, that hasn't totally happened yet. There was a weird thing. I shot a hidden camera thing that was like a pilot that didn't ever go. But as part of it, they wanted us to go on Tinder and try to convince people to come to a place. Oh, no. It was horrible. And so I told Lucas, I was like, I think I have to do it. He was like, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. I guess whatever. And so it was like kind of exciting for one day. Mm -hmm. And then I started freaking out because I was like, certainly people are seeing me on here uh -huh. that know both of us. And they're being like, she's cheating on hey, her husband. Hey, uh, Lucas, uh, <laughs> Jenna's openly cheating on you. Yeah, like flagrantly. very broad social platform that's so funny yeah but also how terrifying for the people who swipe yes on these actors yes and then they go meet them and then like ha 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 you're the joke you fucking <laughs> yeah. idiot it was terrible it was one of the worst things i've ever done to human I beings i felt bad did a hidden camera show and i fucking hated it it's so awful it was so mean there was one thing where they wrap my arms up and then they like propped them up like they were broken or something <laughs> and then left me in Madison Square Park and they had me like take out my phone and drop it and then go, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> like, they, like, oh no. Couldn't pick up my phone. And then like some very nice people were like, oh no, honey, where's a friend? Do you have a friend? Let me text your friend. And then the, when they got to that point, then someone was texting on the phone I was texting, like a producer. Uh huh. So I'd be like, yeah, can you text my boyfriend Dan? And then they'd be like, hey, your girlfriend's just <laughs> like in Madison Square Park, just struggling. And then the producer would be like, fuck her. I'm breaking out with her. She's a goddamn bitch. And then it was just, it was wild. And then people just like genuinely felt really bad for yeah. me. And then at one point I legit started crying because I was like, this isn't fun for oh anybody. Oh, my 
god wait was it one of those ones that's like a social experiment no or it was just to be it like haha look at these dumb entertainment idiots. oh yeah it's called ladylike where we oh, flip the script on masculinity i guess i shouldn't talk shit about it it did air for a season <laughs> yeah I feel like I had a Skype audition for it. Probably. <laughs> Which is so funny. What is a Skype audition for a hidden camera show? It's like, hide behind that bookshelf, knock it over, and say, boo! <laughs> yeah, if you don't trick them in some way, <laughs> that's why I didn't get the job. I yeah, didn't you didn't know them. how to trick people enough. I kept pitching. I was like, what if you put me in a tree and drop me out? And I go, boo! And they were like, no. And I call, it's not a trick. And I was like, I don't know. The other stuff we're doing isn't tricks. I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, the other stuff is just lies. Yeah. You and then there well was once really... where we had to like walk around with our nails and be like, they're wet. I'm sorry. Can you grab a tampon for me? <laughs> so then like men would be like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and in my head, I was like, of course. I wouldn't do that. No. If someone was like, oh, can, I, can you give me a tampon? My nails are wet. I'd be like, then why didn't you stay at the salon? Yeah. Why are you being dumb? Time this out better. Go home. Yeah. Yes, time it out better. Although, when I went the day before my wedding, when I went to go get my nails done with my bridesmaids, uh, one of them pushed their pants up <laughs> when they were getting the pedicure. They pushed their pants up so far over their knee uh, that they couldn't get it back down. <laughs> and their nails, like, on their hands were wet. So they she, like, couldn't really push it down. And she had to go into the bathroom with one of the nail artists who <laughs> had to, like, help her take her pants fully off and put them back on. What a dream. So, you know, sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> what a dream. Life yes, just but happens she was to in you. in the salon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she wasn't okay. like out in the world. That yeah. is so funny. Nail technicians and nail salon people must see the strangest thing. They must also see the worst side of people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was one lady who was getting my nails done. She was like, what's your name? And the woman goes, I'm Dana. And she's like, no, no, no. Tell me your real name. Ugh. And she was like, my real name's Dana. She's like, no, no, no. Where are you from? Vietnam? Uh, China? Uh, <laughs> she was, and she like kept going. And at one point I very slowly like looked at her and stared at her for like a hot minute to be like, stop. Uh, just, stop doing this. And then she kept being like, I want to use my own polish. And they're like, it's fine. She's like, to use my own polish? It was very wild. And I hope I see her again. Yeah. She was a dream. Okay. <laughs> I want you to look at my Tinder profile. Have you ever, like, swiped through a Tinder profile? I mean, a little bit when I was lying about being on Tinder. Oh, my gosh. This is a great pic. And you have to describe it because we're on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I keep just making visual references. Uh, okay. So the this is your main profile picture. That's my main that pops picture. Up. So it's you wearing a very funny shirt that's like a cartoon face. <laughs> That's not a good description of it. And you're holding a gigantic <laughs> dildo. Uh-huh. And I feel like you look amazing. Thank you. Okay, so so far, all I can say is the picture's great. <laughs> okay, cool. Because the thing I really like about it is that the dildo, like, you're kind of standing against a brick wall, but then there's, like, something on the wall, mm -hmm. like, a piece of art, and the dildo's in front of the piece of art, so it's almost hidden, so it takes you a second to find the dildo. Oh, what a dream. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, it's great. Um, okay, so what should I do? Read through your profile? <laughs> you can read through it. You can swipe through the pictures. Anything you want. Oh, I can want. swipe through the pictures. Mm -hmm. Oh, on yours. Oh, whoa, this is great. Oh, my God. The next one is like a full Christmas pic. Mm -hmm. It looks so great. You're like lit up. <laughs> this is great. It shows, you know, you participate in Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because in real life, I do not. Really? No Christmas at all? I told my roommate that if he wanted to decorate for Christmas, I was going to charge him $600 extra. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, not kidding. You don't care for it at all. I hate Christmas. Oh, One, no. because everyone's like, tis the season to give. But I'm like, tis all seasons to give. <laughs> <laughs> you should give all year round. And it's just, <gasps> it's cold. And then you have to like see your family. And I, uh, yeah. Some of them are not for me. Yeah. I get that. Okay. Next picture. Trailer selfie shows that you work. <laughs> but it's the third picture, so you're not trying it. to brag. Set life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is great. 
I mean, these are all amazing. You climbing a bookshelf in a leotard. <laughs> oh, my God. The, are you on the set of The Voice in this one? That's what someone else said. No, I was in Australia and I was at Madame Tussauds. Oh. Tussauds? Tussauds. I don't know. I don't know. I was being a real silly tourist. What, like, section of the museum was this? I think it was pink. Oh. I think pink was, like... They had her, like, in the air and then a bunch of, like, hearts around it. Oh, whoa. Because, yeah, you're inside a heart, but it mm-hmm. looks like the set of The Voice or Living Single. <laughs> or not Living Single. Uh, yeah, Living Singled color? Out. Oh, Singled Out? I've never seen Singled Out. That's really? an MTV show? Yeah. I never saw it because I did not grow up with cable. Oh, my God. Cable so I, raised I me. I missed <laughs> out on Rugrats and anything on Nickelodeon, anything on MTV that people love. Oh, God. You should try to see if it's on YouTube. I think it was hosted by Chris Hardwick. Oh. I think. He's, he left at midnight to do what? What is he doing now? I don't know. It's like he's hosting like a pyramid show. Oh, he was hosting that insane, that wild show, The it's Wall. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in my brain, I've never seen it, but in my brain, the wall is hosted by Chris Hardwick, and each contestant has six chances to climb up a vertical wall with, <laughs> with nothing in it. <laughs> and, and they get nothing if they get to the top. Nothing, nothing at all. And then he goes, thank you for watching the wall. I mean, I would watch that show. <laughs> Me too. Just people like taking running starts at a wall. <laughs> Just, you're trying to get up there. In reality, the wall really felt like it was designed to make people divorce because it was like it was usually married couples. I think they eventually got to like groups of friends mm-hmm. or something, but it was married couples. And then like one would it was so confusing and convoluted, but like one would be in like a soundproof booth mm-hmm. and they would be answering questions, not knowing whether or not they got them right or wrong. Oh. And if they got them right. A, like a ball would drop and whatever money amount it landed in, you would get that money. Uh-huh. But if they got it wrong, a ball would drop and whatever amount of money it landed in, you would lose that money. Oh, dang. And then at the end, the person that was in isolation would have to decide whether or not they were going to take the <gasps> money that they had won or like a set like $25,000 or something. Uh-huh. Ooh, uh, wait, that sucks. Yeah. And so their spouse would be out on the stage being like, don't choose the money like <laughs> and then they would have to come out and tell each other like what happened and sometimes they would just be like super disappointed of like you just lost us like a hundred grand or something oh no it was wild <laughs> that's awful yeah i bet you weren't expecting a full synopsis no, of the game show the wall today but i'm very pleased with it <laughs> yeah i mean i highly recommend checking it out the human element is just so brutal <laughs> Oh, man, that would bum me the fuck out. Yeah, it's a huge bummer. Oh, my gosh, wait, can I edit your info? Yes! Your only interest on your Tinder profile is your own show? (laughs) (laughs) It's because it's linked to to Facebook. And my show, (laughs) Loosely Exactly to Call, is on Facebook. So I guess it's the only thing I like. How embarrassing. How do I make that go away? (laughs) I don't know, but that's amazing. Uh, How embarrassing. I guess you have to like other Facebook pages. Oh, I guess. But what what other Facebook pages (laughs) would you like to, like, round out your personality for Tinder? What are you editing on my Tinder profile? I was on Facebook looking for meatloaf pages. Bacon meatloaf. (laughs) I typed in bacon and that came up. I was like, that's very funny. But it just brought up pages for, like, restaurants and stuff. But I don't here's know if the you thing. Like a restaurant. I have several Facebook pages because I got off Facebook for a while. And then I was like, well, my family has Facebooks and that's how they like communicate now. So then I got a Facebook page just for my family. And then my show, Lucy Exactly Nicole, <laughs> <laughs> that Jen is also on, is now on Facebook. on Facebook. So then I had to like reactivate my old Facebook and then make a. Like a comedy page or whatever. Oh, yeah. So now I've got three Facebook pages. That's a lot. It is a lot, but I have an assistant who manages them all. (laughs) (laughs) Which sounds insane that I pay someone to be like, can you post things on my social media page? But I feel like everybody does that. (laughs) 
Like anyone that's busy. really into social media has to have a person helping them. It's which is a too crazy much. Job. Maybe I should get a Tinder person Ooh. who helps me with Tinder. Yeah. There has to be that, right? Like some sort of matchmaker slash just like Tinder advisor. Maybe. The only matchmaker I can think of is that woman who was on Bravo with the dark hair. The Patty million- Stanger. Yes, the million dollar matchmaker. Yeah. But I don't know if she can help me because apparently black women and Asian men are at the bottom of the totem pole. Nobody wants us. For Tinder, right? For Tinder and all dating. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's exclusively a Tinder Mm, problem. (laughs) I think it's everything. No, because I think it was OkCupid too. I think people were like, no. uh." Which is wild because like, (laughs) why? (laughs) How many matches do you usually get on Tinder like any given? I match with people all the time. And I think it's specifically because I have a dildo in my picture. (laughs) But I find out, like, rather quickly who is, like, a nice man who's, like, I would like to take you out on a date. Or, Uh like, a bad man who's, like, that's a big... Let's see. (laughs) Let's find something that somebody said. Yeah, what's, like, what... I want the most revolting one. (laughs) Okay. And the sweetest. Well, there was this one man who he was like, I want to sit on, I don't know. He said he wanted me to sit on his face. So then I was like, only if you have cookies. And then I just kept (laughs) talking about cookies and he kept saying nasty things. Let me find one. Well, Serge, Serge said to me, he's 30 and he's a CEO and founder. What does that even mean? These people have like the strangest things. Yes. But he said, nice ass and lips. Wow. And that's it. And I didn't respond to him. And then Riley said, uh, Riley said, Nicole, hey, hello. I said, Riley, what do you have planned for this week? He said, the plan is to have someone sit on my face. <laughs> oh. I said, I could do that. He said, oh, really? I said, yep. Anybody with a butt can sit. <laughs> 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 and then he said, then he got wild. He said, You'd like feeling my wet tongue. Push up your asshole, lick it around. Whoa. And I said, I guess. Because <laughs> I, I don't like sexting. I don't see a point in no, sexting I don't someone I don't know. Yeah. And then once you know someone, it's like, well, why can't you just wait till you see them? Yeah. Unless you're like far away for a very long time. Yeah. Even then, I'm just like, watch porn like what are you doing like i don't know has understand. lucas ever sexted you no i truly think i don't even know how either of us would respond if we got like a sexy message I think we'd just have like, you ever are you kidnapped <laughs> <laughs> like what happened have you ever sent him like a nude picture no that's another thing that i'm just like i would just feel so silly yeah i've sent someone a nude picture specifically because he was like Show me your butt. And I was like, oh, okay, that's okay. I can show you my butt. But then it was like not a sexy picture. I like sat on the <laughs> counter and it was yeah. like, I like held the phone up and took it in the mirror. And I looked at it and I was like, is this what people want from me? <laughs> and I sent it to him and he was like, this is good. Now bend over and show me more. And I was like, you know what? I don't really want to. And he was like, fine. All right, no, what did he say? He was like, come on. I was like, well, Sashir's in the hotel room, and it's rude for me to just be in the bathroom taking pictures. And he's like, just tell her you're doing business. I was like, I don't know. It was a fun improviser in New York who was just, like, really trying to get me to show my butt. Whoa. Yeah, men get very persistent. Ladies do, too. Sometimes I do. Yeah. Have you solicited like dick pics or no i have pictures? never asked anyone for a dick pic. yeah i mean what oh wait would? no that's a lie <laughs> oh wait no no the guy i was seeing for a little bit he would be like can i send you a dick pic and i'd be like of course you can <laughs> if that's something you need to do that's fine and i think early in my adolescence youth i don't know my early 20s i'd be like send me a dick pic because i was like i think that's what you want me to ask Uh uh-huh but then literally when i hit 25 i was like i've seen enough i think i've seen them all yeah honestly i think if you've seen three you've seen them all probably how many dicks have you seen um (laughs) i mean that's a wild question yeah it's a wild question (laughs) (laughs) Well, 
nine years is a long time to be with someone. Yeah, no, totally. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I guess I don't really know off the top of my head the answer to either, but I guess there's, is there a difference between, like, dicks in the wild? <laughs> or, like, dicks on screen? Uh, I would say a dick close enough that you could reach out and grab it. Oh, boy. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's a treat. I don't know. I guess I don't know either. I would say at least 30. Whoa. It's too many. I mean, there's no such thing as too many. There's uh, there's definitely such a thing as too many dicks. <laughs> there was this one dick. It was like a thimble. <laughs> it was so scary. His pants came down, and I was like, oh, no! <laughs> and How I did still he fucked him. <laughs> oh, he went, I know. And then I didn't have time to unpack it. I was like, what do you know? What do you, what do you know? I've I mean, he must know it's small. Maybe, or maybe he, maybe he, women were gasping all the time and no one uh-huh. ever was like, we're gasping because it's small. <laughs> but he would know. I mean, just being in the world. <laughs> Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients, personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly, I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It could be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit TakeCareOf.com. The promo code is date me. What a treat. You'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time. Bye bye. I forget how often like men see dicks all like they see dicks all the time and like yeah. locker rooms and stuff and bathrooms. Mm-hmm. So like you gotta know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dicks are so weird. <sighs> yeah. They're very, they're also like, I feel like aggressive, even yeah. when they're just flaccid, flapping. <laughs> I, I just got a, we just got a dog four months ago and it's a boy and I truly, every time his dick comes out, it <laughs> is repulsive and it makes me want to die. It's well, so is gross. Is he fixed? Uh, he hasn't gotten neutered yet because he is, oh. he needs to get neutered now. He's six months now. Ugh. But, so uh, that means his little like red thingy comes out. Yeah, but like it that is I think so happens. So gross. Does that stop happening after they get yes. neutered? Oh, good. Yes. Because Charlie would get very excited, <laughs> and then his fucking little. I hate when people call it a lipstick. because yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not putting that on my mouth. Yeah, I'm like, like don't that's ruin so lipstick gross. for me. It's disgusting. It's like a little red nub. Ugh, it's so gross. It's and it gross. used to happen with Clyde. Um. In the beginning, because I think he was just so happy that people liked him. Because uh, he's such a bad dog. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, we're watching 
our dog Wally basically have a full sexual awakening because he <laughs> like he's the cutest little fluff ball. And then one day we were just like playing with him, and all of a sudden his dick was fully out. And we were like, "This is revolting," Ugh. and it keeps coming out. And then he also started just like. Like, we'll go downstairs to go to bed, and he'll jump in his bed and just make direct eye contact with me and hump the shit out of his bed until he passes out. And it's just like, stop. Stop. This is oh gross. Oh, my God. Your dog is like Louis C.K. <laughs> <laughs> just like making direct eye contact with you, drink something that you don't want. Oh, boy. And it's just for him. <laughs> Honestly, I would love to know what's going through your dog's brain, especially after he's just like, ah, got it all out and like passes out. It's crazy. Do dogs come? Is that a weird? That's a weird question. I mean, they must, right? I don't know if they would that way, but like, I don't know. They must ejaculate in some way in order to have like a a baby. I guess. <laughs> but do they only ejaculate when they're inside a lady dog? <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen dog gum. Me either. So I have to imagine. Also, I feel like it's too awful to Google. Like, I feel like the government would yeah. be like, we have to take her away. Yeah, yeah. You can't be Googling things like that. That's nasty. Yeah, send her to prison. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a question. Yeah. I know you're married and you're not a lesbian, mm, but would you date me? <laughs> yeah. You would? I would. Oh, what a treat. Most people have said no. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. I feel like I would at least give you, like, three dates. Oh, yay! <laughs> That's a real treat. It's so fun to be with you. Oh, Jen, thank you! <laughs> and also just, like, I feel like wild things happen. <laughs> I just always think about that time when we were at Bubba Gum Shrimp and you got <laughs> chastised by the waiter for screaming dick too loud in front of families. <laughs> And it was so funny. Uh, I can't even remember why I was screaming dick. I think it was in answer to a trivia question. <laughs> <laughs> I got really into trivia. Oh, boy. What was... They had some tricky questions. Yeah, there was one that was very tricky, and I forget. It was, what was Jenny... What kind of shoes was Jenny wearing to her wedding? Oh, yeah, she was barefoot. And I kept screaming, her feet! <laughs> and the server went... You think she was wearing her feet? And I was like, well, she wasn't wearing any shoes. <laughs> and then you won, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And you win nothing. Yeah. Which Not is even kind like, of incredible. Yeah. Give us a dollar off. Give us a free drink. And then yeah. I <laughs> got a bunch of uh, cups from there. I have oh, so yeah. many Bubba Gump cups in my house. And then I got mixers. <laughs> so I like, sometimes I'll make a beverage, I'll make a cocktail, and I'll use my Bubba Gump mixer. And then there's a little strainer. <laughs> it's a great time. I gotta get back there. Yeah, you gotta go back. I love Bubba Gump. We still need to see Medea Boo too. Oh, yeah. We, we gotta, gotta go. do it. I, Next weekend. The other reason I talk about that Bubba Gump night a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is because there was a very funny moment where someone came up to you and was like, I love you. I'm such a big fan. I love your show. And then turned to me sitting across the table and asked me to take a picture of you two together. <laughs> and I was just like, this is amazing. <laughs> it's like, but she's on the show too. Did I say that or no? Uh, no, you were like very caught up. It was so quick. Like no one even really noticed that it happened. It was just like this very funny. I don't think she even like was looking at me. She was just kind of like, will you take a picture? Uh, it was so That great. is very funny. Well, I don't, I think I've told you this. My therapist watched the show and she was like, it's very funny. You're great. But I got to say, my favorite character is that Veronica. <laughs> And I was like, hey, therapist, stop it. You can't say not somebody helping. else is your favorite person. You're not helping at this all. This is like my parents all over again when they like my sister more. <laughs> yeah, she uh, loves you. Oh, my gosh. Well, I got her. <laughs> also, I was supposed to have a therapy session last week, and then I missed it because I slept too hard. And then I still haven't called her, and she has called me several times. Several times? Yeah, because she's like, what are you, dead? Oh, and I'm like, yeah, no, not dead, just dead. ashamed. <laughs> I took too hard of a nap and missed therapy. <laughs> it's like, very bad. I mean, I feel like of all people, she should understand that. She does. 
She'll get like a little annoyed with me and then I'm like, sorry, sorry, Mary. And she's like, it's fine. <gasps> Here's another question. Yeah. Why do you think I'm single? Oh my God. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm doing a podcast so I can just gather answers and then go into the world and apply them. Oh, my God. I don't know. Do you ever think about why, like, <laughs> you can't do that this? That just all of a sudden felt so pointed. Do you ever ask yourself that? <laughs> I ask myself that every night before bed and then sometimes, sometimes I start crying. No, I'm kidding. I don't think I've ever cried about being single. Maybe when I was younger. Now I'm just like, ugh, yeah. Why? I mean, I just like, yeah, I truly have no idea about anything. <laughs> I don't know. So, okay, nine years is such a long time to be with someone. Yeah. So you met, tell me about the first time you met, because I don't think I know this. Oh, my gosh. It's kind of a sweet story. So uh, freshman year of college, I rushed a sorority uh I was in a sorority for like a year and a half, and then they were like, you do too much improv. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's but, very funny. Yeah. They were like, get out of here. You clearly have allegiances <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> um, but when they kicked you out, were they like, listen, the sorority is real. And what you do on stage, let's pretend. <laughs> they were actually like pretty cool about it, considering they were just like, hey, you haven't come to a single event. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. And then they were like, by the way, you know, we fine you when you miss an event. So you owe us like $200 or something. Whoa! And I just was like, that's literally the most amount of money I've ever heard of existing <laughs> in my life at this point. So I will absolutely just walk away. Did from you here. pay them? No. Good. I don't think I did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but so I rushed to sorority and Lucas rushed to fraternity and they do this thing in the winter in Chicago, which is, like, horrible, where they make all the new sorority classes stand on the steps of their sorority houses. Oh, my and God. And the new fraternity classes go around one by one and, like, serenade them. Ugh. It's very weird. And they give out – they have, like, a bunch of roses and they'll give out roses to random people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Lucas gave me a rose that night. Oh. And then – that night we were all <laughs> his fraternity and my sorority were paired up because you also then get randomly paired up and then you have a bar night after mm -hmm. and so they were paired up and he at the party was looking for me and he was going around looking for like the girl with brown hair and the white jacket which is how he described me uh but i wasn't there because i was auditioning for a comedy <laughs> wrestling show <laughs> Oh, what a uh, treat. so we didn't meet. And then uh, like a year later, um, a friend of mine invited me. He was like, oh, some friends from my dorm are going to the – there was like one hot dog place <laughs> that stayed open until 2 in the morning on Thursday mm -hmm. nights. And he was like, we think it's funny, so we're going to go there <laughs> at 1.30. I was like, sure. Uh, it's funnier to show up at 1.59. Yeah, that is funnier. Oh, boy. What a loser. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, but then I went and they, like, had this whole ritual where they, like, gather outside of their dorm and one person would lead everyone in, like, an inspirational speech of, like, we're going to wild dogs. <laughs> oh, how weird. It was very weird. Uh, do they do this, like, every week? I think they had done it every week, and then one of them was in a film class where they had to make a documentary, and they were like, I'm going to make a documentary about when we go to Wild Dogs. Ooh, and so I this was like, exists. I know, I've been trying to find it, because that was like the night that Lucas and I first actually mm -hmm. met, so I was trying to find it so we could play it at our wedding, but it Aww. was so, I, I don't think anybody has it anymore. But, uh, so yeah, everyone was like amped up and kind of playing up this like Wild mm -hmm. Dogs excursion, and then we got there, and there were like 20 people, mm -hmm. we filled this hot dog place, we were all eating hot dogs. And then the the owner, as a joke, there was a TV screen on it, and he just put porn on, and everyone was like, this isn't okay. <laughs> what you're doing is not funny. Like, you're a 50-year-old man. You're showing porn to a bunch of, like, 19-year-olds. This is disgusting. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we were also were, like, laughing. Uh, but then on the walk back, that was when I met Lucas for the first time. Oh. Crazy. That is very cute. Yeah. And then we didn't wind up dating for another year. Why? What happened? Um, so we like hung out a couple of times and like hooked up once, I think. And then I 
I had been dating someone. Oh. And then I was like, I don't want to be dating someone right now. And he had never dated anyone really. And really? he was like, I desperately want to be dating somebody right now. <laughs> uh, so I was like, we can't see each other. Wait, were you his first girlfriend? Um, no, he had had like, like a relationship in like high school kind mm-hmm. of, but like it was like, yeah. He was just kind of like, I'm ready for a real girlfriend now. And then you became his real girlfriend. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I want that. <laughs> I want that. I want to be in a real relationship. <laughs> what I want. You should go back to college and join sorority. <laughs> I mean, I didn't go to real college, so maybe that's like why I missed out. Yeah. I went to a musical theater school where all of the men were gay. Uh huh. All of them. I'm pretty sure maybe, like, 1% was straight. Like, they let us live together. Yeah. Like, we weren't uh, separated by gender. They're like, no, so like, what's happen. the worst that's going to happen? <laughs> that they accidentally kiss, and then he goes, no, I don't <laughs> want this. Uh, I also attempted to go. So I looked up. So I texted Allison Rich. Our mutual friend. Yeah. And I was like, Allison, let's go mingle with men. And she was like, yes. So we looked at a list of singles bars to go to. And then Laurel Hardware was on it. And I was like, let's go there. Then everyone was like, it's kind of douchey. And I was like, but that's where we're going. Ugh. And then I went to her house. And then we had a drink. And then we just got very drunk and stayed there. So like, even when I plan to go meet men, it goes badly. Yeah. I mean, I have to imagine it's kind of like when you're starting out in stand-up where you're like, I know I have to go to this thing because of the possibility that yeah. it'll be good, but, it, like, the likelihood is it's going to be horrible. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so it's very hard to motivate yourself to go. It's super hard. Also, I never had to do – this is real braggy, but I didn't ever have to do open mics. Right. I got to do book shows pretty quick. Yeah. If you're listening and you don't understand that, an open mic is where a comic will go, put their name on a list, and then you get, like, two minutes – and then sometimes you only get to get up. Yeah. But, like, for the most part, it's, like, two minutes, and you have to sit through, like, a bunch of dudes being like, ah, I love to jerk off. And you're like, great, <laughs> this is hilarious. And then you get to go up, and then like, everyone leaves because you're a lady. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, it's really awful. And then, like, a book show is someone reaches out, and they're like, here's 15 minutes. You come to the show. You have a guaranteed spot. So, yeah, I've never had to do open mics. I've never had to, like, <laughs> like search for things in comedy. Like, yeah. not that it all just came to me, but I did a lot of work at UCB, and then when I started doing stand-up, it was like, good and great. But now it's like, I have to like go out and find men. I have to like do open mics at yeah, bars. Yeah. And then it's hard. How do you talk to people? You don't know. You've been married. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I, uh, I one time had to go to a party that was like a very industry party, mm-hmm. uh, that I didn't have a plus one to and I didn't know anyone that was going to be there. Uh-huh. Uh, and I just, I literally sat in my car, like, for 10 minutes, just, like, fully sweating, being like, I'm just going to have to go in and just start talking to someone. Like, I don't know. That's honestly very brave of you. I don't know if I would have done it. I say no to things all the time when I don't get a plus one. Oh, really? Because I don't, it's hard. And it's hard, it's- but it feels really cool. Because let me tell you something, so many people are, like, so, they're not great at doing Mm -hmm. that and so if you're at all comfortable Mm -hmm. even if you're faking it people are just immediately so like oh my god (laughs) like like I literally I walked into that party and I went up to the bar I was like I'm just gonna get a drink I guess and I just turned to the person next to me I was like what are you drinking (laughs) and then wound up talking to that person like multiple times throughout the night because he also didn't know anybody and so we kept just like yeah finding each other and then we just openly were like we don't know anyone at this party and then, like, we would go off and meet different people and then, like, introduce them to each other. <laughs> it was funny. We were just, like, party buds. <laughs> All right. So maybe I will start saying yes to things. I don't like being uncomfortable. Maybe that's why I'm single. Oh. oh. I'm just, like, un- I don't like being uncomfortable. I like being near people I know. Yeah. And I'm slowly turning into a homebody, which is, like, maybe not good for <laughs> finding a-, a love. Yeah. I, I mean, really like being at home. Same. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, I was just watching a Friends episode (laughs) right before I came here (laughs) where they were talking about how they're like 29 now and all they want to do is like stay at home. And I was like, that's me. (laughs) Yeah. That's me. I don't. I like, I went out the other night 
Oh, <laughs> I went to, so I was, I went out after work, drank a bunch of beer, got home, and then was like, I think I'm getting a headache because I need to keep drinking. And then John was like, let's go see a movie. And I was like, okay. So we went and saw Lady Bird and I put two bottles oh, of wine in my backpack. I loved Lady Bird so much. Uh, I did not. Oh God. Okay. It was not for me. We could talk about it off the <laughs> record. I don't want to shit on anyone. <laughs> great, great, Because great. everyone takes time to make their things and it's not nice when people are like this is trash it's not right. nice but we'll go to bubba gump and we'll, we'll talk go about to bubba it. Gump and i'll screw about penises and we'll talk about it <laughs> but um so i put two bottles of wine in my purse or my backpack which is like a purse because it's small and then i went with john and his boyfriend and they like had the tickets and i was behind them and for whatever reason john turned around and pointed and was like the third one's for her and uh, i was like don't put the spotlight on me i have wine in my purse oh my god so then almost immediately this very short little security guard was like open your bag and i was like but this has never happened before <laughs> she was like what's the big deal open your bag and i was like I don't want to. <laughs> she was like, open your bag. And I was like, there's wine in it. Oh. And she's like, you have to put that back in the car. And then she's like, the cups too. You really came. And I was oh like, my oh. God. That's amazing. So then John, <laughs> we just like went outside and another security guard watched us shove a bottle of wine down <laughs> his sleeve. And then we put the other bottle of wine back in his boyfriend's car. And then we got right in and it was fine. And then I got very drunk during Lady Bird. And then... Was so hung over the next day, and I bar- I didn't even go out. I yeah. just went to a movie. and yeah. got drunk. <laughs> so like going out to find a man just seems exhausting at this point. Yeah. Do you think that you uh, like your man is out there? Like you haven't met him yet? I hope so. No, I mean like. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That's not what I meant. Oh my god! <laughs> like you have like he's not already in your life there's like no one in your life where you're like oh, there's maybe something here there's one guy in my life who i don't know super super well but like we're around each other enough and i every time i'm near him i'm like oh you're so funny and you're uh-huh. just like a nice person and i don't know how to be like can we like go out yeah yeah, like, it just it feels weird because like we are acquaintances slash friends, and then we have a lot of mutual friends in common. And at this point, it just feels very strange. Yeah. Oh man, you should just ask him to hang out. Oh, <laughs> it feels crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure. When I first moved to LA, I had like no problem just like hooking up with people and like being like we should hang out or whatever, just because I was like. The new lady here. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, Nicole, she's new. She's fun. Yeah. She wears a lot of wigs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what so it said about me. They're like, yeah, I heard you're a fun time. You wear a lot of wigs. I was like, that's weird. That's very weird. That's what? That's very true. I love wigs. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess I should just say something. I think about him a lot, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. You have to just say something. <sighs> oh, God. All right. <laughs> All right, I'll do it next month. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the time has come. I think we're like done. Oh my god! Yeah. Wow. Okay, Jen. Yeah. Do you have anything? <laughs> do you have anything you want to promote? Um, I mean, I guess watch Ellie to Vegas on Fox. Mm-hmm. Also, Jen and performs loosely exactly Nicole. Loosely exactly Nicole will be on at some point. Jen is in two episodes this season, or yeah. three, two. Two, and your voice is heard in the third. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so three. <laughs> so three episodes. And then she performs on Thursdays at 11 p.m. at the UCB Theater. Oh, right. Jen literally just looked at me like she had no idea what what I was saying. You're like, I do? When? <laughs> Where? Yeah, if you want to see Jen live at a show that she has no idea about, it is Thursdays at 11 at the UCB Theater on Franklin. It's called Last Day of School. It is? <laughs> <laughs> It's very funny. And if you like this podcast, please rate it five stars on iTunes. And subscribe, probably, yes, right? And subscribe <laughs> on iTunes it or is. wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you rate my podcast five stars and you write a comment where you try to hit on me, I'll read a nasty one the next time I record. So if you, if you write something like, Oh, Nicole, I wanna, I wanna scoop you up like chocolate pudding because <laughs> you're all bumpy and lumpy. <laughs> That's a good one that I just thought of off the top of my head. Oh, also, if you want to actually see my Tinder profile and my Bumble profile, you can go to Nicole Byer 
backslash comedy or something on Facebook, and there's an <laughs> album there, and you can fucking look. Okay, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> That was a HeadGum Podcast.